The CCP has laid claim to the entire global supply of fish. This could cause a global food and economic crisis. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. In the Chinese Communist Party's twisted Marxist-Leninist ideology, the world belongs to it. Mao Zedong said, to struggle against the heavens is endless joy. To struggle against the earth is endless joy. To struggle against people is endless joy. You can see this attitude in the environmental devastation the Communist Party has wrought on China. But because in the twisted communist cult, China shall inherit the earth, they aren't stopping with just China. The CCP has laid claim to the entire global supply of fish to feed its massive population. China has built a massive fishing fleet that is leaving entire seas barren. This could cause a global food and economic crisis. Now, that doesn't sound like endless joy to me. Millions of people around the world depend on fishing for food and their livelihood. According to the East Asia Forum, Chinese fishing fleets have trespassed into waters of over 90 countries and depleted fish stocks. Obviously, China isn't doing this off the coast of California. Like the Belt and Road Initiative, China is exploiting the waters around poorer countries that can't fight back. You can see in this map showing the activity of China's fishing fleet that they tend to focus on the waters around Africa, Latin America, and the Pacific. Pakistani fishermen fear these Chinese fishing fleets will leave no food left in the sea. Scientists are warning entire fisheries will collapse in the East and South China Sea. Probably because, according to the Philippines, China is fishing by just dumping cyanide in the waters to kill everything. But it's not just the waters the CCP is exploiting. The Environmental Justice Foundation interviewed Indonesian, Filipino, and Mozambican fishermen who have worked in Chinese distant water fishing fleets in the Southwest Indian Ocean. Of the 44 fishermen interviewed, a majority reported physical violence, intimidation, and threats, deception, and abusive working and living conditions. Ini tempat processing ikan. Kami ditempatkan di sini tidurnya. Miles away from shore and safety. Vulnerable crews are then exposed to a vicious cycle of exploitation and abuse, with no means of escape. Yeah, kalau di kapal Cina nggak ada kata istirahat, kecuali ABK nggak kerja. Kalau nggak ABK nggak kerja, yang nggak dikasih makan. Terkadang kerjanya ada yang 18 jam, kadang 19 jam. Ikan banyak, kadang 22 jam nyampe. Followed by two hours of sleep in a fishing processing room. Sounds restful. Many of these workers are stuck in this situation thanks to debt bondage set by exploitative contracts that they then must work off. Honey, I guess Marxism didn't liberate the workers. The really scary thing about this is we have no idea just how bad it is. For example, according to Our World in Data, two-thirds of assessed fisheries are sustainable, providing four-fifths of our seafood. So that makes it sound like what China is doing isn't that big of an issue, right? Most of the fish people eat is sustainable, except they say assessed fisheries. But many fish stocks across Africa, Asia, and South America have not been assessed. And those are exactly the places China is exploiting. To give you an idea of the scope, in the summer of 2020, the conservation group Oceana counted nearly 300 Chinese ships operating near the Galapagos, just outside Ecuador's exclusive economic zone. The ships hugged the zone so tightly that satellite mapping of their positions traced the zone's boundary. Together, they accounted for nearly 99% of the fishing near the Galapagos. No other country came close. But what data we do have comes from the Chinese Communist Party itself. And they like to lie. From Hong Kong Free Press, it's difficult to ascertain the precise quantity of fish caught by Chinese vessels. Official statistics overreport the domestic catch, likely so that officials can claim to have achieved production objectives and substantially underreport the distant water catch, probably to avoid exceeding quotas agreed with foreign governments. On top of that, China is actively hiding their catches. China uses these giant mothership fishing vessels that hold thousands of tons of fish storing fish from smaller vessels and refueling them so the small ships can stay and catch more fish around the world. According to experts, 
China's use of these motherships makes it easy to underreport the catch and disguise its origins. Experts warn that the smaller ships may be turning off their transponders to avoid detection to disguise illegal or unregulated catch. So, how big of an impact is China having? Not a big one? Kind of a big one? Global famine big one? We don't know because this is the Communist Party's MO. Take advantage of poor developing nations that can't fight back and manipulate the data and lie so we're completely in the dark until it's too late. Exposing this kind of thing is one reason the CCP hates China Uncensored. Chinese state-run media have even called the show disgraceful anti-China garbage. But it isn't cheap to make this show. I have a whole staff behind me, and I don't make enough from dwindling YouTube ad revenue to keep the show afloat. That's why I need your help. All it takes is a dollar or more an episode on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. I make about 16 episodes a month, but if that's too much for you, you can set a monthly limit. So you can ensure I can keep uncensoring China for even a dollar a month. And as a thank you to everyone who gives on Patreon, I'll answer one of your questions at the end of these episodes. Today's question comes from Crusading Duck. Hey Chris, I've been watching your show for a while now and even showed a couple of my friends your channel. We always love the humor your team brings. My question for you is, what happens if the CCP is able to capture Taiwan? What does that mean to the U.S. and the rest of the world? Well, I'm glad you and your friends like the humor, Crusading Duck. Talking about the CCP causing, for example, global famines from overfishing can be a bit of a downer. But to answer your question, if China takes over Taiwan, the effects will be devastating. Number one, Taiwan makes super advanced semiconductors that the entire modern world relies on. The factories that build them would be destroyed, and they're too complicated to just start back up. Basically, the lifeblood of the modern world would be cut off. China would also begin a campaign of cultural genocide in Taiwan, with lots of killing. Just like happened in Tibet, Inner Mongolia, and Xinjiang, and what we're beginning to see in Hong Kong. But besides that, it would have a chilling effect on the region. It would show every country in the Indo-Pacific that the U.S. can't be relied on to protect them from China. The U.S. would lose all credibility, and China would become the de facto power in the region. Five trillion dollars of shipping goes through the South China Sea, and China would now be in control of that. Imagine China having the power to sanction the U.S. Remember how bad things got when the supply chain was messed up during COVID? That was with the whole world trying to fix it. Imagine China being able to weaponize it. That's why Taiwan must remain free. Thanks for your question and your support, Crusading Duck. If you want to join Crusading Duck, click that orange button. And here's a video I want to show you about what makes America great, something YouTube considers too controversial these days, which is why I've hidden the topic in gaming content on my new show, Deep Thoughts While Gaming. Click here and let me know what you think. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.